the home of the Nobel Prize, this city dates back to the 13th century, contains the world's largest sculpture park, and has been spotlighted as Europe's green capital. We're exploring the land of the midnight sun on this episode of Ms. World Traveler in Oslo, Norway. Friends, I'm Ms. World Traveler Carrie Damiano, inviting you on an adventure to discover style, design, fashion, art, and antiques in great shopping destinations across the country and around the world. Come with me. Imagine a place where in the summer months, the sun never sets and the lines between daytime and nighttime are completely blurred. Imagine a place once covered by glaciers that when they receded, left nature's own work of art, the fjords. Imagine a place where skiing used to be a mode of transportation, then became a sport and is now a way of life. That place would be Norway. With the 1960s discovery of the most significant oil field ever unearthed, Norway became the eighth largest producer of oil and the third largest producer of natural gas in the world. Their economy is now built on a massive amount of wealth and has resulted in comprehensive social services like free health care, free college tuition, unemployment benefits, pensions, and infrastructure projects. It also accounts for the well-maintained buildings, parks, and other public spaces, their excellent standard of living, and the extremely high prices of goods and services. Once you get over the initial shock of how expensive everything is in Oslo, then you can just enjoy all the city has to offer. For example, the Vigeland Sculpture Park, comprising over 200 works in granite, bronze, and raw iron, is the life work of Gustav Vigeland, who was supported by the Oslo City Council from 1921 through 1943 to both design the park layout and be the lead artist slash artistic director. They built him a studio with the understanding that upon his death, it would become a museum housing everything he created and collected throughout his life. The centerpiece of the park, the 46 foot tall monolith, took three masons 14 years to carve out of a single piece of granite and depicts 121 intertwined human figures. It stands as one of Oslo's most important attractions and is free to visit 24 hours a day. So if you think that is impressive, how about a company that since 1879 has survived fires, floods, two world wars, the depression, and several pandemics. When I first saw the name, I thought it was Dale, and I thought it was a person wrong on both accounts. So let's go get it right. When you think of Norway, often the first thing that comes to mind is cold weather and skiing. And if you are going to be outside, what better way is there to keep warm than a distinctive Norwegian sweater? And who better to tell us about the history and importance of wool knitting than Tova Mette, retail manager for Dala of Norway. So Tova, Hello. I have been saying it wrong the whole time. <laughs> It's so okay. You're, you're, we you're, are used to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell Absolutely. me a little bit about the history of the company. This is company is uh, Welcome to Dale, Dale of Norway, and the company is from 1879. In 1879, it came one Dan Danish guy to Dale, and he wanted to start with factory, 
So since 1879, the company has existed in Dale, Dale Kvam, where Dale of Norway Dale. factory is. Dale. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of Americans say Dale, Dale, and it's absolutely correct also. We say uh -huh. Dale and we say Dale. Both uh -huh. is uh, fine. So it's named after a place, yes. not a person. No. <laughs> the place is Dale Kvam, where the factory is. So mm -hmm. they named the factory and the company Dale of Norway. Yes. Okay. And as you see on the logo, you can see the mountains. Uh, we try to show the mountains here uh -huh. in the logo. Well, I think Norway has a, an abundance yeah, of, mountains, of mountains, right? Absolutely, <laughs> we have. And cold weather, yes. which is where the whole idea for warm clothing. Cool. Yes. And, and we'll, you know, I've heard, I heard the saying, there is no bad weather. There's only bad clothing. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. You're so, so we're trying correct. to fix that here. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But with wool, you can use all year round. Wool is um, regulating the body temperature. It's um, self-cleaning. You, you can wear it in all kinds of weather, but we start uh -huh. also to make uh, thinner uh, items in merino wool. Yes. So it's um, totally nice to, make, to use them yes. in the summertime. So, so it doesn't always have to be just for skiing. No, absolutely <laughs> not. And they are modern next year also. It's not because we are not fast fashion. We are mm -hmm. slow fashion and we use yes. pattern which is continuing year by year. Yes. So uh, the beautiful yeah. traditional patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what you think of when you think of a Norwegian sweater. Mm -hmm. This. This is the kind of thing yes. that co that comes to mind, right? Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about this, this one. Kind of we relaunched this year. This is the um, 1994 Olympic Lillehammer. Ah. So uh, since it's 30 years this year, um, mm -hmm. since the Olympic Games, we we found out that we wanted to remake it, and uh -huh. it's so popular. We sold so many of it. It's a uh -huh. little bit more shape now than it was in 1994. Mm -hmm. But that's just so you modernized a little it bit. Looks so nice on. Well, and Absolutely. then um, I also, you know, again, when you think of the Norwegian yeah. sweater, you think of this very distinct, the yeah. the sort of traditional patterns around the neck and the and yes. the closure. Yes, so this, absolutely. This one here. This has also been an Olympic sweater in. Uh, if I'm not taking uh, making a mistake, you're saying um, Toronto in Canada. Okay. Yes. I don't remember the year, the year but uh -huh. it was uh, two mascots in that Olympic Games, which was called uh, a Peace and Harmony. And Dal mm -hmm. Norway made Peace Sweater and Harmony Jacket. Ah, yes. very nice. Mm -hmm. But you've been making um, the Olympic wear? Since 1956. Wow. The first one is over here. The first mm -hmm. we start to make in uh, 1956 in uh -huh. Cortina, Italy. Okay. Yes. Well, and also, wasn't it in the 60s that you started uh, doing the machine yeah. Uh, work. Yeah, before, around the Before that, maybe 80 years, yeah. you had a cottage industry, is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. That women handmade, handmade these. But, yes, but, there was knitting sweaters uh, until yes. around 1964, I think, if okay. I'm not uh, making yeah. a mistake. Yeah. 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 So we went to the machine, mm. uh, which then helped your production, of and now course. you can be worldwide we right? are worldwide so yes. we we are quite big in export so and we are big in uh, canada and in the united states so of course we need okay. help to make them uh, with more machines we need more yeah. hands so yeah. most of the when we saw them together some of the girls in our the factory is doing it at, at the factory, but we need also help from another uh, factory in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 2009, Dalo Norway bought the factory, so it's owned by us and it's okay. run by us with the Norwegian rules and Norwegian um, salaries. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I wanted to move over here because I wanted to ask you about yes. some of the um, embroidery. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw this beautiful embroidery across the room and again I've seen it around and so it's been it's been around quite a while hasn't it absolutely yes. Setestal is one of the oldest um, items in Dale I think mm. um, this um, how you call it in English trim, trim mm -hmm. is hand it's uh, made in Norway by a company Norwegian company also the buttons or clasps clasps, yes. clasps. Uh, and they are in pewter, real mm -hmm. pewter. Mm -hmm. And you, you were telling me that this has made a bit of a resurgence. 
uh, meaning uh, it was popular at one time and yeah, now it has come back. Yeah, that's because yes. knitting now is so trendy in Norway. All mm -hmm. the young people want to go in the closet for their parents and grandparents to find an old ah, sweater, yes. bring it together in the daylight and start to use it because it's very, very trendy now. Mm -hmm. That's why we sell this for young people also, uh -huh. a lot. Well, it truly never goes out of style. When you use classic <laughs> patterns, Absolutely. Uh, it never Absolutely. goes out of style. No, they, they don't. And, and it's an investment piece. It is. Right. So uh, slow fashion and yes. long lasting is the most important for Dale. And okay. less footsteps on the earth. So we are, we are quite sen um, sustainable, but mm -hmm. we are not 100% there, but we are working to uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, I love that you um, have sustainability as one of your pillars Thank of the company, you. but you're also um, reusing some of the scraps over and the, uh, the yarn. Over. Yes, yes, that's correct. Instead of throwing it away, so we make uh, tote bags and we make uh, uh, pouch bags and toilet uh, bags in mm. two sizes. Yes. And I think inside you can find a small card with the story about why we do this and from trash to treasure. Oh, I <laughs> love so, that. <laughs> yes. And we sold so many of them. The, the, yeah, that's a, that's a great People idea. People are so happy. Self-cleaning, moisture wicking, breathable, and temperature regulating, wool is the choice to keep you cool in the summer and warm in Oslo's harsh winters. And you can find a variety of classic and contemporary patterns at Dala of Norway. To adorn yourself in one of these beauties, you will shell out several hundred dollars, but at least you'll be warm and fashionable. Now don't go away, we're just getting started. We'll be talking arts and crafts and jewelry, oh my, on the next not to be missed segment of Ms. World Traveler in Oslo.